Labrit, good morning. Good morning. Bonjour. Uh, thank you very much for being with us uh, this morning uh, here. We just mentioned the last Sunday, 14 of uh, July, France uh, celebrated the National Day, Bastille Day, uh, with the military parade. And this year it has uh, um, the Olympic flame to highlight it. Um, also the time just after the parliament election in France, of course, uh, putting it all together. Um, what is the mood of the people in France now? Um, on the Olympics, certainly there is a great expectation and a level of enthusiasm that was um, nearly unexpected. We have been, uh, the flame, the Olympic torch has been traveling around France and we have seen incredible numbers of people coming to cheer, coming to follow it at all the stages or all around France and our overseas territories. And it has been a very great uh, success and a very pleasant one. And it, it says a lot about the mood, I think, on the Olympic Games. and. Um, uh, people are really uh, happy to welcome the world and to welcome the best athletes of the world. So I think on this side, we are ready, we are expecting everybody, and it will be a great celebration of sport and Olympic values. On the political side, you know, I'm, I'm a civil servant, so I'm not in a comfortable position to discuss, about, uh, to discuss about the political life. What I can tell you is that we have strong institutions and they are doing their job, they are working. We have had a, a snap election um, decided by our president, um, just after the European uh, elections. It's, it's in our constitution. It's not the first time, I think, in the, since the constitution was voted. It's the fourth time we have this type of uh, snap elections and now things are going their way. So I can understand it's, it's maybe a bit difficult to read at the moment because um, uh, many of our partners and allies are, are um, used to having very much more, uh, let's say, readable election results. And uh, this time it's not the case. The parliament is split between uh, three blocks, more or less. Mm -hmm. uh, but I guess we'll just have to learn the fine art of uh, compromise and making uh, coalitions. But it's, it's completely within the scope of uh, uh, the way the institutions and the parliament work. So we just need um, some time to adjust and, and uh, move forward. How long can, can, can this process take? Uh, I don't know. Mm -hmm. I don't know. It really depends on the way politicians are mm -hmm. are discussing between them and how long it takes before a name can be put forward to the president uh, and a, a name that will be acceptable for a parliament to, to have a vote of confidence. But it's... Um, Time will show. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. If we are talking about France and Latvia, how would you describe the cooperation between the two countries? What unites us? Um, I re usually say that France and Latvia, we are, we are allies, partners and friends. We have many, let's say, many scope of different, many areas of, uh, of discussion as EU members, where we have a lot of uh, common interest. We are part of the same union, a, a union that's ever deepening. So um, uh, it takes a lot of uh, discussion to make sure that our views are converging and that we are on the same page on many issues. And it's the case on, on uh, many issues. Um, we are um, uh, allies in uh, NATO, and uh, at the moment, uh, obviously, um, uh, the, the, um, the challenge on our security is, is, uh, is very great. And uh, we know that our generation will need to build a new uh, architecture for uh, security in, uh, and defense in Europe, and, and, and we are working on it. And we can see summit after summit, meeting after meeting, we can see the result, and we can see the incredible effort that was done by uh, all the NATO countries to... Um, to uh, support Ukraine is, uh, is showing how we can get together. Between Latvia and France, we have some areas where we are doing very well. We have some uh, excellent cooperation going in some sometimes very precise area that the public is not necessarily aware. We have an amazing scientific cooperation on quantum technologies, on uh, physics, for instance. We have a lot ongoing between our um, best uh, scientists. Mm -hmm. We have a very good uh, police cooperation. Also, not many people are aware. And you know certainly that we have some. Uh, we have. Uh, we are very grateful for that. The help of uh, uh, Latvian armed forces for our Olympic Games. Yes. We have uh, many um, uh, um, team uh, of um, uh, border guards and policemen coming to help for our Olympic Games that are going to need a, a lot of uh, police forces so that everybody feels comfortable and safe uh, during the games. And we, also dogs. we also discussed about dogs <laughs> because dogs they have been here in, uh, in... I know, I know, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, no, we are very grateful for that. And it's uh, all together, uh, we'll, we are going to have 18,000 policemen mm -hmm. uh, around... Uh, uh, sorry, 30,000 policemen, 18,000 uh, military, plus 18,000 private security. So uh, just, for the, just for the games, just on the location of the games. So the, 
the, the security infrastructure is very, very strong. Yeah, sure. Uh, if we are uh, talking about the security, also uh, it is a priority in uh, European Union and NATO as well. It is clear to all countries how would you say is it clear to all countries actually uh, combined together uh, how to fight against the aggressor um, and help Ukraine with, win the war? Um, <clears throat> what we strongly believe in France is that we are facing a situation where uh, Russia has no limit. They don't accept any limit and they have, um, um, uh, they have shown that they cannot be trusted on anything. So we have to be, you know, we have to be smart and we have to to give Ukraine what, whatever they need to defeat uh, this uh, vicious uh, attack. So that's what we are doing. We have signed, uh, we have had this, I was referring to this amazing effort of uh, all the NATO countries, all the EU countries to support Ukraine, militarily, but also financially, and uh, in terms of humanitarian help to, to make sure they can face this uh, aggression. Uh, France and Ukraine has signed a, a bilateral defense agreement, I believe as Latvia, we have signed it last February. And um, it's for 10 years. And our philosophy is to say we need to provide, to work with Ukrainian and give them what they need to, to work very, you know, to listen to, what they, to their needs and make sure that we answer their needs um, for, for anything. We have been um, um, providing uh, military help in, in very high technology uh, weapons. Mm -hmm. We have been providing also humanitarian help, but also working already on reconstruction. That's also an area where both France and Latvia, we are um, working specifically also on the same uh, oblast in, uh, in Ukraine, in Chernihiv. And um, we also try to coordinate our efforts so that we uh, help Ukraine be back on its feet as, uh, as soon as they have uh, regained the, the full sovereignty over their territory. So more or less we have, like Latvia and France, we have the same uh, position about the uh, war, about the how, 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 how they need uh, to help uh, in Ukraine. What we have in common certainly is that this war in Ukraine is a matter of security for all of us. It's not only Ukraine. It's not only a matter of principles of a country, sovereign country being attacked and invaded. It's a, it's a matter of uh, our own security. And I think we, we deeply share this with Latvia. It's not something we do for Ukraine. We do, also, also, we do it also for ourselves. Because if we don't stop, if we don't show clearly that there is a rule-based order in the world and that this type of attack is, is not acceptable, then there will be no limits. So I think on this we are completely on the same line. But how do you feel about people in France? Uh, aren't they tired of uh, the war, of talking about the war, of um, helping uh, for Ukraine? Because here in Latvia it's a bit different. Uh, the war is happening like so coaster. close to us. Yeah. Sometimes. I suppose, but... Um, that's not what we see in the polls, you know, um, well, first what you see on social media is it's always, you know, not ne very necessarily representative. I think uh, people understand that this idea of a rule-based order, that you just don't, can't attack your neighbor, it's not possible. And I think people deep down understand what's going on. Uh, the latest polls we have had shown that there were above around 60% of French people who were in support of continuing efforts. Um, to Ukraine, and I think it's uh, it's not dying down. Maybe then you have some extremist voices of people, but you know you'll always have people who will criticize anything and feel that they are uh, deprived of something if we help another country. But I really don't think that's taking over. Uh, in uh, what is certain is that whatever is the next uh, government, and uh, uh, that's uh, really a, a sure point. Uh, our commitment to Ukraine uh, will not. Um, will not diminish and uh, our commitment to our allies to uh, all the commitments we have on, on defending also the eastern flank of NATO and EU as you know France is present uh, with forces to for the security of the Baltic states we also pres present in uh, Romania uh, also in the framework of NATO mm -hmm. and and these are strong lasting commitments and uh, it's um, it's uh, above every political uh, uh, arrangements that can uh, that can happen these, these are really um, uh, commitments of the of the country and it's mm -hmm. uh, long lasting as an ambassador you started working in latvia in june uh, 2020 and you will finish your work this summer is it known already which will be the next ambassador here and what would you say to the next french ambassador 
in Latvia. So the, the next ambassador has had this um, agreement. You know, you're ne never you're you're not an ambassador until you have presented your letters, your credentials to the president. Um, so he will be announced formally when his uh, credentials have been accepted by uh, President Rinkevich uh, soon after his arrival. I'm leaving in, in uh, mid August, mm -hmm. and. Um, what I'm going to tell him, I'm going to tell him to enjoy Latvia. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> and to, um, I think what I really loved here is that um, you are welcome everywhere. I've been invited to so many places. And I think you can understand many things about Latvian people, about their history, their culture, if you just accept every invitation and go everywhere and meet a lot of different people. And that will be my advice to my colleague. Uh, I'm sure he's going to be... Uh, uh, enjoying Latvia, but I'm sure he's going to be liked also by Latvian people. He's a very smart guy and a nice colleague, and I'm, I'm really glad to hand over um, our beautiful embassy uh, to him. It's, um, it's been for me uh, four years. Um, um, as you may know, I've, I have a very long history with, uh, with Latvia because I, I first came in Latvia when I was a student uh, in 1992. Um, and it has always been a sort of um, dream for me to come back here as a as, um, as an ambassador. The first time I came, I was invited by the French ambassador and I was in his, you know, in his embassy, in his launching. Well, that must be a nice place to work in. Um, wouldn't, I wouldn't mind being an ambassador here. Mm -hmm. And it, it took me 32 years, but I came back. And uh, no, I had uh, really extremely um, enriching and touching and incredible years. Also because we felt this, um, you know, we were really shoulder to shoulder in very difficult times when Ukraine was attacked. And you could feel this very strong European uh, friendship between our, um, our nations, and that was really uh, heartwarming. Actually, I know for a fact that you speak a little Latvian, so therefore my next question is going to be in Latvian. Kā jums pašai, kas jums pašai visvairāk patīk Latvijā un arī mūsu iedzīvotājos? Lūdzu, piedodiet man... Man patīk, man patīk, um, domāju, ka, kas man patīk paša, tas pašas lietas, ka Latviešiem. Um, man patīk, piemēram, pastaigāties mežā, dzied pie ugunskūrā, senot, <laughs> senot mm -hmm. um, peldīties augstos ezeros. Um, <laughs> un um, um, Latvieši um, um, protbūs Prot būt kopā, nerunājot, vienkārši baudot pavaidīto laiku kopā, un tas man ļoti patīk.